While washing machines can differ from model to model, they all operate on similar principles. In this video, we will address the five stages of top load washer operation, as well as potential problems you may encounter. The home's hot and cold water supply lines are attached to the water inlet valve on the washing machine. The water temperature control allows the user to select hot, cold, or warm water to enter the tub during the fill cycle. Keep in mind that newer energy efficient washers will automatically reduce the temperature of the water to conserve energy. The water level switch allows the user to select a small, medium, or large load, which determines the amount of water that will be used. Some models do this automatically. Most top load washing machines will use 8 to 18 gallons of water during the fill cycle. Once the temperature and load size is chosen, the control or timer is set to a wash cycle. The control sends voltage to the water inlet valve, which opens, allowing water to fill the tub. The water level switch has a tube that connects to the side of the tub. As the tub fills with water, air pressure increases in the tube. When a sufficient amount of water has filled the tub, the pressure in the tube causes the water level switch to shut off the voltage to the inlet valve, closing it and stopping the water flow. The control or timer can then advance the cycle. Common problems that can occur during the fill cycle include the tub overfilling, taking too long to fill, or not filling at all. Too little water entering the tub indicates that the water inlet valve is probably restricted, commonly caused by the buildup of hard water deposits. A restricted inlet valve will need to be replaced. Trying to clean out an old valve is not recommended due to the risk of part failure after repair. A tub that is overfilling may be an indication that the inlet valve has failed or that there is a problem with low water pressure to the appliance. Water inlet valves need water pressure between 20 and 120 pounds per square inch to function properly. If the pressure is too low, the water may not shut off properly or it may trickle into the tub when the washer is not in use. The agitation cycle begins when the control sends voltage to the drive motor. Depending on the model, the motor may directly drive a transmission or use a belt to operate the agitator drive shaft. The tub may move a little during the agitation cycle, but most models apply a brake to prevent the tub from rotating. The drive shaft oscillates the agitator, or wash plate, which causes the laundry to circulate through the tub. Some models utilize a two-part agitator. Directional cogs, or dog ears, cause the upper part of the agitator to rotate in one direction only, forcing the laundry to the bottom of the tub. The lower part of the agitator then forces the laundry back up. If the cogs wear out, the upper part of the agitator will not function until the worn cogs are replaced. Some washers will continue to agitate even when the washer lid is open. This design allows for additional items or detergent to be added during the cycle. Be aware that too much detergent can increase soap scum buildup, which can cause an unpleasant odor, so you should follow manufacturer's recommendations. You can occasionally use a washing machine cleaner, like a fresh, to help reduce the amount of buildup. If the agitator is not working at all, you should listen to determine if the motor itself is running. If you hear the motor running, it's likely that the drive belt or coupler is worn or broken and will need to be replaced. Once the agitation cycle is complete, the water needs to be drained from the tub. The control sends voltage to a drain pump, which pumps the water out the drain hose to a wash tub or drain pipe. On some washers, the main drive motor drives the pump by spinning in the opposite direction than it did during the agitation cycle. In order to properly drain the water from the appliance, the drain hose must be looped higher than the top of the tub and not pushed too far into the drain pipe if applicable. If the hose is not installed properly, water entering the tub may drain out simultaneously, preventing the washer from completing the fill cycle. 
The rinse cycle fills the tub with fresh water and may introduce fabric softener if added by the user. The laundry agitates for a short time and then the water is drained. Some washers are equipped to introduce the fabric softener through a dispenser in the agitator. The action of the spinning tub releases the softener. Other models use a dispenser valve, which the control opens during the rinse cycle to dispense the softener into the tub. During the drain cycle, or immediately after, the brake releases and the motor spins the tub using the drive coupler or belt. Be aware that washer drive systems vary. Some models use the belt, a clutch, or a variable speed control board that help the motor to gradually increase the spinning speed. The faster the tub spins, the more effectively the water is removed from the clothes. The washer has a lid switch that prevents the tub from spinning when the lid is open. If the tub does not spin, the lid switch may have failed. You can test the switch for continuity to determine if a continuous electrical path is present and the component is functioning. If the switch tests positive for continuity, you should inspect the drive belt, coupler, the motor, or other drive components to determine if any of these parts have failed. Repair Clinic has a solution for many of the problems you may be experiencing with your washing machine. Enter the appliance's full model number in our website search engine for a complete list of compatible parts. Our site also has an extensive selection of instructional videos to assist you, covering topics like part testing, disassembly, and part replacement. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy.